Abba Ahimir Hebrew, B. Heimer Russian, Abba Sojal Gysinovich, the 2nd of November 1897 to the 6th of June 1962, was a Russian-born Jewish journalist, historian, and political activist. One of the ideologues of revisionist Zionism, he was the founder of the revisionist maximalist faction of the Zionist Revisionist Movement (ZRM) and of the clandestine Brit Haberianum. Topic. Biography Abba Shal Gysinovich later Abba Ahimir was born in Dolji, a village near Babruz in the Russian Empire today in Belarus. From 1912 to 1914, he attended the Herzliya Gymnasium High School in Tel Aviv. While with his family in Babruz for summer vacation in 1914, World War I broke out and he was forced to complete his studies in Russia. In 1917, he participated in the Russian Zionist Conference in Petrograd and underwent agricultural training as part of Joseph Trumpeldor's Hehelet's movement in Batum, Caucasia to prepare him for a life as a pioneer in the land of Israel. In 1920, he left Russia and changed his name from Gysinovich to Ahimir in Hebrew, Mayer's brother in memory of his brother Mayer who had fallen in battle that year fighting against Poles during a pogrom. Ahimir studied philosophy at the Liege University in Belgium and at the University of Vienna, completing his PhD thesis on Oswald Spengler's The Decline of the West in 1924 just before immigrating to the British Mandate of Palestine. Upon his arrival in the country, Ahimir became active in the labor Zionist movements Ahdut Havoda and Hapoel Hatzair. For four years, he served as librarian for the Cultural Committee of the General Workers' Organization in Zikron Yaakov and as a teacher in Nahalal and Kibbutz Jiva. During these years he regularly published articles in Haaretz and Devar, where he began to criticize the political situation in Palestine and of Zionism, as well as of the workers' movement to which he belonged. Political activism In 1928, Ahimir, along with Yehoshua Yevon and famed Hebrew poet Uri Zvi Greenberg, became disillusioned with what they viewed to be the passivity of labor Zionism and founded the Revisionist Labor Bloc as part of Zayev Jabotinsky's Revisionist Zionist movement. Ahimir and his group were regarded by revisionist movement leaders as an implant from the left whose political maximalism and revolutionary brand of nationalism often made the revisionist old guard uncomfortable. In 1930, Ahimir and his friends established the underground movement Brit Habirianum, the Union of Zionist Rebels, named for the Jewish anti-Roman underground during the First Jewish-Roman War. Brit Habirianum was the first Jewish organization to call the British authorities in Palestine a foreign regime and refer to the British mandate over Palestine as an occupation. The group initiated a series of protest activities against British rule, the first of these took place on October 9, 1930, and was directed against the British Undersecretary of State for the Colonies, Drummond Shields, when he was on a visit to Tel Aviv. This was the first sign of rebellion in Palestine's Jewish community against the British and the first time that Ahimir was arrested in the country. In 1933, Brit Habirianum turned its activities against Nazi Germany. In May of that year, Ahimir led his followers in a campaign to remove swastikas from the flagpoles of the German consulates in Jerusalem and Jaffa. Brit Habirianum also organized a boycott of German goods. Brit Habirianum became fierce critics of the Havara Agreement and of its chief negotiator, Chaim Arlesorov. When Arlesorov was killed in on a Tel Aviv beach in June 1933, Ahimir and two friends were arrested and charged with inciting the murder. Ahimir was cleared of the charge before the trial even began but remained in prison and began a hunger strike that continued for four days. He was convicted of organizing an illegal clandestine organization and remained incarcerated in the Jerusalem Central Prison until August 1935. His imprisonment put an end to Brit Habirianum. Upon his release, Ahimir married Sonia Ne Astrachan and devoted himself to literary work and scholarship. His articles in the newspaper Hayarden led to his re-arrest at the end of 1937 and three months in the Acre prison together with members of the Ergun Zvai Leumi and other prominent revisionist activists. Following the establishment of the State of Israel in 1948, Ahimir became a member of the editorial board of the Harut Party Daily in Tel Aviv, as well as a member of the editorial board of the Hebrew Encyclopedia in Jerusalem where he published, under the initials A.A., scores of important academic articles, mostly in the fields of history and Russian literature. 
Ahimir died at the age of 65 of a sudden heart attack on the eve of June 6, 1962. His sons, Yaakov and Yosef, both went on to become journalists. Ideology <inaudible> 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 Ahimir regarding Zionism as a secular, territorial phenomenon. He was the first to speak of revolutionary Zionism and call for a revolt against the British administration in Palestine. His worldview generally placed the contemporary political situation into the context of Jewish history, specifically the Second Temple period, often casting himself and his friends as anti imperialist freedom fighters. The British administration as a modern incarnation of ancient Rome and the official Zionist leadership as Jewish collaborators. Ahimir's views had a profound influence on the ideology of the Irgun and Lehi undergrounds who later initiated an urban guerrilla war against the British. Although Ahimir described himself as a fascist during the late 1920s and early 1930s, and wrote a series of eight articles in the Hebrew Doar Hayam newspaper in 1928 entitled, From the Notebook of a Fascist, few of his contemporaries took these leanings seriously. Zayev Jabotinsky, who consistently maintained that there was no room for fascism within his revisionist movement, dismissed Ahimir's rhetoric and argued that he and his maximalist followers were merely playacting to make a point and were not serious in their professed fascist beliefs. In the October 7, 1932, edition of Hazit Ham, Jabotinsky wrote, such men, even in the maximalist and activist factions, number no more than two or three, and even with those two or three, pardon my frankness, it is mere phraseology, not a worldview. Even Mr. Ahimir gives me the impression of a man who will show flexibility for the sake of educational goals, to this end he has borrowed some currently fashionable and quite unnecessary phrases, in which this daring idea clothes itself in several foreign cities. Ahimir's fascist image during the 1920s was seized upon by author Christopher Hitchens in a 1998 article titled, The Iron Wall, to argue that fascism was the ideology guiding Benzian Netanyahu, a disciple of Ahimir, and consequently his son, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. In an April 16, 2010, interview with the Jerusalem Post, Ahimir's son Yossi defended his father against accusations of fascism, saying, Hitchens is a known anti-Israel writer who takes my father's writing completely out of context. Fascism in 1928 can't be viewed in the context of the 1930s. Of course he would not be a fascist in view of how it developed. 